Patrick Mahomes just won his second Super Bowl in four years. Mm -hmm. He is 27 years old. And this is what happens when you continuously put yourself in that position. Sometimes breaks aren't going to go your way. Sometimes right. the breaks are going to go your way. And in that moment, the break went his way, and he was phenomenal tonight. Yeah. If you look at the stats, the Chiefs averaged 6.4 yards per play against a team that finished number one in the NFL in EPA, I believe number one in passing EPA, yes, correct? one or two. Right yes, there right, in, yes, the, but in they're the top, top two. Top okay? three in every metric. Chiefs yeah. averaged 6.4 yards per play. That was better than what they did in the regular season when they led the league. And the Eagles averaged 5.8 yards per play, which is what they averaged in the regular season. So these two teams that were the best teams in the league, we got to see that version of yes. them. And that included the guy who was going to win the MVP and is the best quarterback alive. Yes. And just another check onto his resume, another addition. This is better than an internship, though, on his resume. Yeah. This is a this is a CEO type of a, a line in his resume. Also, he had uh, Mahomes was 67% past success rate tonight, which is one of the highest, his second highest of the season. The only game that was better was that Cardinals game in, in week one when they just were playing on air, routes on air, not the Super Bowl. 20 of those 30 dropbacks were successful plays. No sacks for Mahomes. And, I mean, God, there's so many times you could tell how – What do you how, think was – just yeah. watching that game in real time, yeah. what do you think led to their ability – to mitigate the pressure. Yeah, uh, under center play action stuff to create yeah. some space. I also thought Mahomes was very cognizant. He knew he was going against. He averaged 2.69 year time to throw in the game, yeah. but I think that there were some extended dropbacks. Yeah. So if you look at, I'm sure that half of them were under 2.5 seconds. I agree. Also, especially in the first half. Intentionally in the first half, I'm pretty sure they started two drives with screens. Yeah. And so I they think did. that they were trying to slow it down a little bit. And then in the second half, I think one of the ways they slowed it down is how well they ran the ball. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, yeah. but I think they did do a good job of being like, all right, how can we slow this thing down, give ourselves a little bit more time? Because we talked about it in the preview. If the Eagles pass rush didn't dominate the game, would the Chiefs be able to throw the ball consistently? And the answer was yes. Yes. And that's it kind of saw the peppering and anyone that listened to our gambling show with Bauer, that was kind of my narrative for his over completions. He didn't hit it, but he was still just, you know, knife in the defense in different ways, RPOs, the play actions, the straight dropbacks, kind of and hitting every type of throw, which is really cool. Always fun to see a quarterback do. You see the dig, especially in person. That's that's another thing. I forget sometimes when I watch these guys with person in the game. I, yeah. I get a new appreciation for some guys. AJ Brown. Number one guy I got a new appreciation for. I love the guy, and I'm like, he's incredible to watch in person. But he, yes, he was very. It was a it was a game plan. Yeah. He one two three ball out. One two three ball out. There wasn't a lot of you, Mahomes scanning, which you know he's he could do once in a while. It was ball out, or he went to the creation mode. And man, he avoided a lot of sacks. Um, I was kind of bummed when the ankle. But he got hit. It twice was in a row. scary moment. Very, I mean, I mean just, looked, you really hope that doesn't torpedo right. the game. And it, that. It was shaping up to be an amazing game. Yes. And so it just was. It was a great game plan. Really, there's only a couple times, and I can't wait to rewatch this game on film, of course. I mean, it's much better than week 16 or week 18 uh, <laughs> uh, Bucks falcons like I did last time or Bucks cardinals um, But it, it's I, I want to see how they pass off the games with the defensive line because I thought the offensive line did a nice job other than the one with the red it got around. Or there, loop, was but third, there was a third and eight in the first half. I believe it was the only real three and out kind of yep. sputtered moment yep. that the Chiefs had in the first half. They missed the field goal, obviously, but I believe it was third and eight. And they ran up that five man, the five down front yes. where they line up Reddick as a defensive tackle. Yes. And then he loops all the way around. And you said it. You got, they do it every time out of that. Every time, every, time. Had, every time they're in that five down look where he's inside, yeah. they do it. They got two. I literally watched every Eagle sack this, from this yeah, season. All seven. They got two of them on that exact sort of design. Yeah. And that was really the only time that they used any sort of games or yes. any sort of trickery to get immediate pressure. Yeah. I mean, the. The Chiefs of line kind of knew what they were going against. Yeah. And I, it was, a, again, it was a great game. But this is Andy Reid. He's very good at this. They A lot, ton of tight ends. Yeah. I mean, they bear, I think they're in 11 personnel, less than 50% of the game, which, you know, we've talked about going into this year that their numbers have gone down uh, going into this game. A lot more 12 and 13 personnel. We saw pony personnel. So yeah. they, they played off a lot of season tendencies. This is what happens when you have a head coach that just gets to do this, knowing that you're kind of going to win 10 games and make yeah, the playoffs yeah. every year. You can kind of play off uh, season tendencies, and that's what they did, doing the pony personnel, using um, McKinnon on, on on run plays on third and one. I know I'm getting ahead. ahead. I'm getting ahead. I'm getting ahead. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. So just zooming back a second here, yeah. we're, we're, I'm looking at the Jumbotron right now, okay? And there is a Lombardi trophy next to Patrick Mahomes, Frank Clark, Chris Jones, this entire group. Yeah. To win two – this early in your career, again, when we've talked about this in the previous show, when you are the centerpiece of your team, when you are the driving force, and Brady got very important pretty quickly. 
yeah. year three or four when they were when they were going back. But you know, one, he was a cog in the machine that existed. They were 14 point underdogs when they won that Super yeah, Bowl. Right. What Mahomes has done and the prominence that he has had in the league on the Chiefs within their success. We've really never seen anything like it. Nope. You know, the one guy that got brought up this week, I can't remember who it was in terms of individual success very early on. Favre was really good. Yeah. Favre was like an MVP candidate yeah. pretty early in his career after getting to Green Bay. Yep. But they didn't win a Super Bowl until year six for him. Yeah. Right? Wasn't that the 96 season? Yeah. So in your 95 five. season. Yeah. Yeah. Year four. Season. Yeah. So in your four, I think. No, 96. 90, 96 season, 97, 98 with the Broncos. Be the, they beat the Patriots in 96. Yeah. And in 97, they lost to the Broncos. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. So it's <laughs> guys remembering dudes right yeah, now. <laughs> I, what, what we're watching, I have never watched. No. And it, I, you want, it's important sometimes, in my opinion, to kind of step back and remember that. And just because when you have this team, when you have these sorts of teams, and the only real comparison for me is what the Patriots were over two decades, it's so easy to just kind of take it as a given and start taking it as a given. And we shouldn't do that. We should right. step back and recognize the fact that what they've accomplished is unbelievably special. The type of player he is is unbelievably yeah. special. Travis Kelsey is a part of that. Yeah. Andy Reid is a part of that. Yeah. Like everything about what this organization has been, I think it's worth kind of sitting in it for a moment because we don't see this very often. <laughs> Or ever, yes. <laughs> or ever. The we, we did the discussion last week, and I I, I brought up Marino because he went to he had instant success. They had su uh, successful as a team early in his career, but then they kind of never went back. Like in throughout his career, you know, some playoff runs and all that. But this feels just automatic with yeah. Mahomes. And now we have talked about this. What's really cool about teams that sustain success is the ever changing supporting characters. Yeah. Sometimes it's usually oh, it's just the coach and the quarterback that the ones that stay. You know, the Sean Payton, the Drew Brees, the Belichick, and the Brady's. But uh, you hear those names that I'm bringing up right now: <laughs> the <laughs> Brees, Brady, Mahomes, and Mahomes is winning. And again, that's the thing. It's not just the the numbers test. And it's not just um, the team success. It's not one or the other. Again, that was always the Brady and the Manning arguments. Now it's he's doing all of it. I mean, he's got all pros. He's got Pro Bowls. He's winning another MVP. It's just he's just racking it up, and he hasn't even hit 30 years old yet, or even coming close. It's it's truly unprecedented. I mean, in a lot of sports, like Gretzky might be the one who had like this kind of like sustained success early, and that's I'm just Hockey. going. Yeah, I know. Five I'm going to other sports. You go to this football is 22 players on the field. You don't see players dominate in football like this, like just over and over in the biggest moments too. That scramble is going to stick out in my in my brain the rest of my life because out of one foot again, oh my, his, he, he and he even peek behind the other one point in the game. That it's but that's that was him right then and there. It's just that in those big moments he makes the plays. He puts the team on his back. How many times have we seen him do that? Two minutes. He had a great one against the Chargers this season when he, you could tell he was like, "I got this." And he went, would look to scramble, and then he's just peppering balls all over the yard. He's hitting different receivers. Juju Smith Schuster has become a huge player throughout the game. It's not just Kelsey. You always see him figure out what the defense is doing to him. Yeah. And it's really cool to see a guy always find the answers. And it, it's amazing. I mean, he's, he's incredible. He's the best player I've ever seen.